Right, it's a cup of tea here for you, Lisa. Hello, Louise. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Emma. Emma, <gasps> nearly had to ring you up. I couldn't get the, um, I couldn't find Facebook on the Huawei. What an idiot. Right, uh, um, Lisa, can you just hold, can you see over the top or not? Yeah. Right, guess which cup's yours? The little one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the little one. So this is <laughs> this is a sample for the pint one um, because basically my need is greater than hers. There you go, Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, if you want a bigger one, just just. I'm lucky. I've got a cup of tea today. Did I not give you a cup no, of tea? Okay. <laughs> <I'm finding> you. <laughs> yeah, I only do it in front of you. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thanks very much. I do have my mask on. I don't want you thinking that we flout the rules here because we're very, very strict, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, she is. Hello, hello. Good morning. I nearly just didn't do... I need to do my painting a day as well. I've, there's been three days with no paintings because it is manic here. Right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think we'll leave it at that. Good morning, me and Margaret at the ready. Margaret? Who's Margaret? I thought your mum was Anne. Ah, oh, Betty, lovely Betty Scott. Hello, how are you? How are you and um, Ian getting along? Hello, Susan. I need to drink some tea first. It really is the first cup of tea today. Ah, oh, tea. Best drink of the day. Do you remember that advert? Now then, look, I've had a new toy arrive. So this, uh, somebody I know has two expensive Bose uh, Bluetooth speakers and he said they're great, but he said this is miles better. So it better had be, it might, it better not just be because he's got shares in it. It's made in the UK as well. So I've literally unpacked it, plugged it in and I'll let you know. I don't think that's allowed now, eeny meeny. I know. It's a new week. Ready to see some happy little colours. Meany, we can't say meany. Oh, well. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know whether there are going to be any happy little colours, but we can just completely finish this. We can move along with these very pale Indian runner ducks. I think there's something else though. Oh no, that's done. Done. Done and dusted. Go. Run free. Um, has everyone received their catalogue who would like one? An invitation to my Christmas open days, which was at a snigger. Yeah. Yeah, we're all sniggering. For which we've organised marquees, portaloo, extra staff, automatic hand sanitizer, you name it. Anyway. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to start on the 2nd of December and um, it'd be lovely to see those of you who can make it. Hello Emma Kasky and thank you very much for sending that video which is hilarious. Emma was the one who who um, helped us on our coke at swim and she finally managed to upload the video of us along with um, slightly better than Benny Hill music which I won't be uploading onto YouTube because it's quite unflattering and also when I look at it now I 
I just think I would have done things differently with my toe flute. I would have had a shorter leash, I'd have had it closer to my body in case it got snagged on something and I ended up drowning. Anyway, that's boring. So there's um, the invitation, there's the catalogue. If you would like one, send me a message and I will send you a PDF if you're overseas or in the UK. But if you would like a hard copy in the UK, message me your address and I'll send you one. Right. My mum is Anne. Margaret is my mother-in-law who is staying with us for lockdown two and fast asleep. Wake up, Margaret! Margaret! Wake up! Wake up! Fast asleep. What am I doing this for? Just people lolling around on sofas, chatting amongst themselves and falling asleep. <laughs> right, move everything out of the way and begin with this, shall I? Bring you forward. Look, there's Lisa beavering away in the background. I do watch. <laughs> I know you watch. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only joking. It's like cabin fever. Right. Now then, I'm going to move my tea because the likelihood is I'll dip my paintbrush in it otherwise. So this cute little penguin, um, I'm not going to do anything else except just a tiny bit of detail on the feet, I think. And then we'll rub off the masking fluid and it'll be as cute as cute as anything. Oops, a daisy. Listen to the guinea fowl making a racket. Don't know what set them off. Just getting a little tiny bit of uh, blue paint. Oh, it's a butterfly. There's um, the sound of a sort of a butterfly there, reminding me of my Wendy Craig story. Life is like a butterfly. Da, 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 da. So there it is. That's finished. Yes, for those of you who don't know or who weren't listening the other day, Wendy Craig is literally up there. She's one of my best. Four hours to upload. Emma, I told you you should go somewhere where there's loads of broadband and do the uploading there, not try doing it from home in the back of beyond. She does. She lives in the absolute back of beyond. It's gorgeous where she lives. Whoops. Right, righty, right. Have you been to Emma Caskey's place, Lisa? I've been to a kitchen. I know, it's a good kitchen. Top kitchen. My next door neighbour's having a new kitchen put in. And it's taken so long that she's lost interest. <laughs> Poor thing, honestly. Poor Susan. Just while we're on the subject of my next door neighbour. So she, she was going past on her quad bike while I was in the office. So uh, I, I did what I often do. Hello, Gemma. And hello, Hannah. Uh, so I just opened the, the balcony door and went out. And while she's shutting the gate, I go, hello. And so she came over and I said, how are things in the world of sheep? And there's her and she's got two collie dogs on a quad bike. And she goes round. And I have to say, it's a massive massive farm and um, 
Where does Emma live? Emma lives next door, Mel. She lives like half a mile to a mile that way. So anyway, so I said to Susan, how are things in the world of sheep? Well, oh, man, she takes, she said it takes us 45 minutes or something to just get around them. So I said, is that just like checking that everything's working all right? And I didn't say, you know, I wasn't vulgar or, um, what's the word when you, explicit. Yes, that's right. And so she said, yeah, she said, you've got to, do you know about this, Lisa? I do. Oh, there's one at it. So she said, you've got to make sure that they don't bleed themselves. I said, what? I mean, do you mean? And she said, yes. She said, but it's just the tip. She said, if, they work, if you work them too hard, I said, well, how do you know? She said, well, because you see a little bit of blood on the sheep's tail and you have to then work out which one it is, which tup, which ram, and then bring them in and give them a rest. And after a few days, you can send them back out. It's, it's really quite brutal, isn't it? Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Just to prove that I do do nature notes and farming notes. I bet you didn't know that. I didn't know that. Did you know that, Lisa? About wearing themselves raw. You don't give them too many sheep. Yeah, maybe they maybe they overwork them. Yeah, that's all very well, but if they've got a lot of sheep and they've got a sore tag or, you know, an injured tag, then you can't finish them off. Kevin Ridley, you'll know all about this. Yeah? Yeah, do you want to say hello? Why isn't he working? Lisa says, why aren't you working? Right, I'll tip you up. Right, so <laughs> to more charming matters, I think. <laughs> oh, dear. Lovely, lovely countryside. No, I don't like that yellow at all. I'm wondering if I should start again on the, you know, here's a nice yellow. I'm just going to um, do a little bit on their beaks. Bills, I should say, not beaks. Oh dear, this brush needs replacing. It's not it's not really sharp enough on the end anymore. Right. Ah, there's a nice little I'll probably do more to the um oh dear, that's a bit muddy. I'm just not quite got a clean enough yellow to do that, so I might just leave that for now and have a little go at their feet. So this is a more orange colour I'm going to make up. Ah, yes. I'm going to clean out a couple of these. Oops. So, did I tell you about my mum and the washing machine? Yes. So I had an email from somebody from John Lewis saying, um, oh, could you get your mother to ring us? We're very sorry to hear that. Get your mother to ring us. <laughs> so I said, I don't think so. 
I think the onus is on John Lewis to speak to my mother or write to her and apologise. She certainly won't be ringing you, and anyway, she's really very hard of hearing. And there is a reply on my phone, but I really cannot be bothered to deal with it right now. And I have to say, for years and years, I thought John Lewis was just the bee's knees. Now, I do not think that. And I don't know why. I, she didn't say to me that she wanted to buy a washing machine. And I would have said, you know what? Robson and Cowan. Robson and Cowan would have just made a really nice job of it. And fetched it. And um, plumbed it in without any stomping off the job, saying they didn't have the right part. And then on the front. So I just need to make sure that the legs are in the right place. So they're beginning to look a bit more a thing, I hope. Right. Let's just see what you're saying. Hello, Alison. Hello, Emmy. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Julian Bassett. Hello, Carrie. Don't the tops have a coloured bag on their front? They have a rattle, which is like strapped on and here. Don't know whether they put rattle on these ones. Some do. Do you use it, Lisa? Uh, yeah, but James often the first room with the truck, he often doesn't put rattle on. And then the second room, he often doesn't. Right. So if you didn't hear that, someone's just asked a good question. Yeah, they um, they don't always put rattle on. To be honest, um, here, I think that they've got such a I don't know. They're just very good. The work of a ram is never done, hence the word ram. Oh dear. How does the framer cope when it's too near the edge? You'll have to ask him. <laughs> uh, yes, that does happen. 
Well, this is, I think this is a straight edge, just bottom line here. Yeah, it's straight. So he would just nip two millimeters off the bottom. Doesn't really matter about, sorry, I'm just showing you. Uh, Melanie asked, Mel said, how does the framer cope if you go too close to the edge, which often happens. Uh, for this one, this bottom line is actually a straight edge. So you could just take two millimeters and it would nip it. Now, I don't do any painting paper stretching at all. And I pay my framer to put every single original I do to bond it to an acid-free board using a reversible acid-free medium, which is a bit like cling film and you warm it from the other side. So basically it gets stuck down. So you're not going to have any bits flapping out of the mount. That is, um, that's how it works. Okay, so I'm going to start on the background because this is going to have a, hmm, I think I'll have some trees and stuff in the background, but we've got a, I quite like it to be, oops, not a, I don't know, I might quite like a dense-ish background but we've got to start somewhere so and if you can remember or I can remember just to put the tiny little like a tiny weeny little hook on the end of the bill because they do have that um, right here And you can correct any slight awkward shaped bills and things at this point. Yeah, we've had such a lot of orders in uh, since the catalogue has dropped onto people's doormats um, and a lot of inquiries. So although um, it's absolutely brilliant that Lisa and Jane and Emma now and again you know, can come in and do the orders for me. But when somebody makes an inquiry about a painting, it's not really something I can delegate very easily because I, I did have someone the other day and it was like, um, oh, do you have any original painting with hounds? So immediately I know that they haven't looked at the website. So they might not be technologically very with it um, and so I would get back in touch and say yes I do I'll get I'll send them to you so that involves like getting all the files with of hound paintings get the measurements with and without the frame and the price and the title and get them uh, in a low enough resolution so that I can email them uh, so they all go into one folder and then they all have to be resized in Photoshop and um, and then attached to an email and it takes ages it just takes ages and ooh, somebody's just made an inquiry about an item that we are waiting for along with the oil cloth that quite a few people would like um, so it's a nice sort of soft start on the background, I think. But I really would quite like to introduce slightly more autumnal colour. It's got to make sense with the snow, so I wouldn't make this a really leafy background. 
and I'm hoping we don't get any snow until after Christmas because wouldn't it just be my luck if uh, lockdown finishes and we were allowed to open up non-essential shops which are sent which a gallery is on December the 2nd and then and then the heavens open and down falls the gentle flakes of snow it did happen once before on the first day of my Christmas open days I think that was the year 2010, 2011, when it just snowed like mad. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick slurp of my tea. Excuse me, I'll just tip you up. Alan Reed, hello, how are you? Now, Alan Reed is a very good friend of mine, and he is a superb artist. And if you go to his website, website, Alan Reed, you'll see what I mean. And Alan and his wife Sue, uh, Susan are very, very old friends of mine. Me too. I think we've missed feet. Me too what? Oh, you're late. Oh, well, that's tough. You've missed it. You'll have to wait. We just have to wait till it gets posted on my Facebook page. That's if I remember. All right, back down. Alan Reed, who I mentioned, if you go to his Facebook page, he does time lapse. I must do that. I hope you don't mind if I copy you. I've been doing time lapse videos for my swims, but I think I should do a time lapse, a time lapse video um, for a painting like Alan does. It's absolutely brilliant. He did one of, uh, I think it's Dean Street or Gray Street. And anyway, this is the fun part of doing a simple watercolour like this that might be made into a Christmas card by flicking the masking fluid on, doing the painting and then just taking off the masking fluid. It's obviously got to be a really, a really good heavy paper. Otherwise, you'll do this and the paper will come with you and that'll be that. You have to start again. I think my favourite part of this painting is where the blue and the green all blend here. I quite like this bit as well. I love that colour. It's like a fire. It's just like a, a flame. Speaking of flames. Speaking of flames, can I show you something? Right. We had, I had um, a beautiful table frame made by this really clever chap in the village who is a blacksmith. He doesn't do horses' shoes. He makes stuff out of metal. He's very good. He's done stuff for us before. Anyway, um, I must have sowed the seed of an idea a little while ago. Anyway, we bumped into him on our walk the other day and he said, oh, you know what it's like when somebody suggests something and it just triggers something in your head? And I went, well, yeah. Well, look at this. Not the dog, but can you see what it's sitting in? Right there. A fire pit. And if you look closely, you see how absolutely thick and solid the steel is. He's made it out of, and there it is from the top. So he's got a sort of grid in there, and he drill holes in the bottom so that obviously, if it's outside, any rainwater will just run through. It's really, really nice. So, and there's another one. I wish I'd taken the baler twine off the dog. But it's so that you can get the scale. That is a miniature dachshund. And that is the lovely chap, he's very camera shy, who made it. He just literally stopped his van. And can you see in the van there's a bigger one there? And that is the fire pit. And he said, what do you think? And I said, do you know what I think? I think they're lovely. And I think they're really, really solid. And he said, do you think, because I'd said, you know, if you make something lovely, you could have them here during our Christmas opening. And I think people would buy them. So um, we discussed 
what people might pay for them and um and he discussed maybe making a few so if you like the look of that let me know because i can tell you they're really solid really nice and they're a bit different the way he's made them because usually they're like 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 a half an orange peel or something we are painting fire pits beth you're too late too late i'm going to tip you up anyway so I think he's going to make a few and have them here during my Christmas opening, which will be lovely because I've got some um, uh, Kate Norris, who is a local flower grower, will be oops, also bringing some lovely um, like Christmas flowers and wreaths for your doors. Really beautiful. She did it last year and the year before. nice to have sort of local things there's also going to be jewelry here uh my friend Lyndon craven uh oh she sells lovely silver jewelry like from really um like really affordable thing earrings and stuff up to really high-end lovely jewelry which you'll have seen me wearing often so there finished ta-da Time is it, Melanie? Well, we did discuss this, and I have to just say because I I know someone who sells like um, much much thinner grade imported from China for over one hundred and fifty. Um, so I said, well, why not? You know, start fairly modest, and then if you sell out, then you can put them up a bit. So much better than pitching it too high and then being stuck with them. So he would be happy with 120 mil. And I think that was a hell of a good price. Very Dickensian. Thank you. So yeah, 120. And if you want one, let me know. If you know anyone who would want one. But if you like the bigger size, that would be probably between about 150, 200. And they're solid. They'll last forever. I, can, I can't even lift them. What time is it? Oh, that's plenty for today. I've got so much to do. I know you think I just sit around playing with paint, but it's not like that. Anyhow, um, it's been a delight once again spending time with you. If you could see the mess on my drawing board. <laughs> and uh, so have a lovely day. I need to do a painting a day. I need to put four in one day because I forgot to do three. Uh, but I've got an idea and I've got Lisa here to help. So um she can kind of hold it and i can talk about it yes beth it comes with a dax and, and if you'd like it shipped to the states can do that as well uh louise thank you it's usually spelt t-h-a-n-k not with a y but i that's me being pedantic you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome anyway lovely to see you do you want to say bye-bye, Lisa? Little wave. Bye. <laughs>